Um, welcome everybody and thanks for joining this farm machinery um, safety webinar um, today. Um, I'm Hannah from Safe Ag Systems and I've been with um, Safe Ag Systems for um, almost three years now. And we are um, an app-based safety system um, to keep track of all of the day-to-day -day operational records um, that are sort of um, involved on farms and estates and sort of provide a one-stop shop for everything um, all um, in a digital format. So I decided to do this webinar today on um, machinery in particular, as it's still one of the um, most hazardous parts of the farm, um, where most incidents and fatalities occur every year. Um, so I'm going to cover some machinery safety tips to begin with, um, then have a look into a case study from the HSE, um, then I'll move on to a bit of an app demo of SafeAg Systems and um, finally FAQs. So I've got my Kirby, um, my colleague Kirby um, with us as well. So she will keep an eye on their FAQs, um, their, sorry, the Q&A at the bottom. So pop anything in there and um, yeah, we will do our best to answer all of them um, at the end. Um, so my first um, page of uh, tips, um, we've got when using um, machinery, always um, ensure that you're um, using safe stop, which is essentially making sure that um, it's in neutral, the handbrake is on, um, the ignition is completely off and the key's been removed. Um, so Part of this keys can also go into a lockbox, which is in the office or um, in a shed somewhere. So having a culture in place on the farm where um, it's normal to remove a key and lock it away. Um, it might cost a little bit of um, time to go and get the key out and use it. But if um, it could potentially you know, save somebody from getting injured, um, that bit of extra time to make sure that that's done properly. Um, another one is um, nobody getting out of a machine um, or vehicle until the largest machine in the sort of yard or field is completely stopped and isolated, prevents anybody from, um, you know, getting accidentally um, run over if they're in um, blind spots, if everybody stays in until everybody is stopped and all equipment is completely off. Guarding on equipment is so important. Um, Rule of thumb is absolutely, if you remove a guard, um, put it back on immediately and never commence work without a guard on. Um, it's never worth, um, you know, that shortcut of not um, having it um, on there. And part of that as well is having systems in place to check guards are there and um, operational and working as they should be. Winterizing is a term I came across um, recently and I quite liked it, so I thought I'd include it in here. So this is when, um, this is a perfect time of year to do it really in the autumn, is making sure that um, equipment that you're putting away for the sort of next season, um, so it could be um, machinery, equipment, tools, um, but also buildings as well that aren't going to be used as frequently. Um, so do all of the maintenance on it clean it and put it away um, where it should be so that when you come to use it um, in the sort of the sort of following season it's completely ready to use um, and it sort of sets you up for success when you're entering that busy period to know that all of that um, maintenance is done and that piece of equipment is ready to use and then I've got plant hygiene on there as well so that's almost um, the sort of winterizing idea but throughout the year. So consistently cleaning, um, keeping tidy, um, housekeeping sort of on the farm. There are efficiencies to be gained here um, when things are in the right place and they're clean and they're ready to use. So um, I don't know about you, but um, when I've got headphones in or on my phone, I'm never as focused on the task in hand. Um, so when you're using phones um, or got headphones in in tractors when it's already a loud and noisy environment, um, that's an extra distraction and um, makes you less aware. So a, one thing you could do is sort of ban it completely or have safety zones. So designate um, safe sort of um, phone zones around the farm 
where um, employees, um, owners, family members can use their phones um, or alternatively put in um, no phone zones um, and have signage up um, in high hazard areas and in traffic paths where um, that's likely to be a really risky place for people to not be 100% um, paying attention. Um, I've got in there checking the understanding of anyone coming into contact with the, the business, so staff, contractors and visitors. Um, people that grew up on farms and in agriculture, um, you get a certain sense of like the, the common sense of what to be aware of. Um, but if you're not used to that environment, things that um, you might take for granted as being obvious or um, that inherent knowledge, um, making sure that you're starting from a, a base point of um, checking understanding with everybody when they come onto the farm. And a really part, a big part of having this conversation as well is that those people often can bring insight from other industries that you may not have thought of. So having a culture where um, they can speak their ideas and come to you with those as well can also be um, extremely valuable. Uh, we've got in there three points of contact when entering or exiting equipment as well. So this means having two hands and one foot or two feet, one hand um, on equipment at all times. Um, and also make sure that um, equipment is stationary before getting on or getting off and never jump out of um, mobile equipment. Um, overhead power lines, so the sort of um, phrase alongside those is look out, look up, look after yourself. Um, be aware even of the height of machinery and um, trailers that you might have um, on equipment. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to actually um, touch it for it to arc and to um, for electricity to travel. Um, and if a piece of equipment does hit a power line, um, stay in the cab and um, until you've been told that it's um, that line is dead and that you're safe to get out because the ground um, may also be live. Fatigue management is a really important one um, where there's some easy steps to um, sort of monitoring that um, during peak times when you're working long hours, maybe during harvest, um, moving regularly, um, getting up and checking hotspots. So hotspots are those areas on equipment that move often and that blockages can occur and they often, they do get very hot as well. So get up, employ sort of um, safe stop, get out um, check them, walk around the machine. Um, something else you can do is well, if you stop and have some lunch, stand up um, and also rotate jobs where you can within the business to um, you know, vary it, keep it interesting and um, do what you can with those um, as soon as you get fatigued, decision making gets um, gets worse and gets slower and then um, gets a lot um, less safe on the farm. So I wanted to add in um, blind spots in here. Um, so any areas around the machine that the driver can't easily see. Um, typically they're um, at the edges or just behind and to the side of the, um, the vehicle or the tractor, um, but they can sort of, they're anywhere that the driver's um, field of vision is blocked. And um, one thing that you can do sort of, again, very low cost, simple training on this and um, sharing that knowledge with the team and getting them to think about blind spots is um, get someone um, sort of a, in the tractor, obviously with it all um, switched off, but get some chalk and get people to stand in different areas around the machine. And you can draw along the floor the areas that are actually completely blind and you'll be um, amazed sort of where those are and how large they can be. Um, but that's a great way to um, really highlight, um, you know, where those areas are and how important um, they are for everyone to know about. The other thing is drawing lines on the floor, um, low cost, simple um, to separate pedestrians from machinery. So you could do that around entrances and exits to farm buildings or um, sheds. And um, often that might be something that's come out of a risk assessment that you've done of an area 
that yes, you can separate pedestrians. Um, and then the next step there is to um, actually have barriers in place and um, physically remove them. Um, then next up, we've got um, children on the farm. So um, agriculture is unique with um, it often being a home as well as a workplace. So um, doesn't mean that children don't need to be um, supervised and um, riding on machinery as well. Um, they need to be over 13 years old um, to get on any machines in agriculture. And then after that point, make sure that they are on a seat um, with a seat belt. And then my final um, tip on here is um, emergency planning. So accidents do happen. So it's just important that um, you've got steps in place to ensure that when they do, um, you know, everyone can respond quickly and, and mitigate any outcome of those. So having um, emergency plans with um, locations of first aid kits, fire extinguishers need to be on hand. Um, I'm sure most people are aware of um, What Three Words, which is a free app to really pinpoint your location to a um, three by three meter um, square. Um, all of those can be um, available um, in sort of areas for everybody to access as well. Um, now we're going to have a look at an incident case study from the HSE. So this is a um, recent um, incident that and prosecution that actually happened um, around isolation of machines. And there's I wanted to sort of pick this apart a bit because there's some really simple learnings in here which stand out and um, steps that can be taken to prevent it. Um, so in summary, um, a, an employee on a farm um, suffered a broken wrist and burns on his arm when a baler um, that he was unblocking was switched at back on by the foreman um, while he was cleaning out that blockage. So um, up at the top, we've got checking hotspots. Um, check those regularly to stop those blockages from um, building up. Um, getting out and walking around as well adds into your um, fatigue part too. So don't wait for it to go. Um, don't wait for it to go wrong. Then we've got isolate the machine. So safe stop. Um, everyone should be out of the vehicle. Um, should never be a driver in the piece of equipment if someone is working on it. Um, keys out, removed, um, completely off. Um, could have prevented that one here. So they were prosecuted under the um, Health and Safety at Work Act and um, found not to have safe systems of work in place. So having those documents, those um, systems of work, risk assessments and inductions. And they were also prosecuted under um, RIDOR, so failing to report the accident by the quickest possible means. So process is in place for reporting in the accident book and if it's notifiable, um, making sure that that does go off to um, Ridor um, as quickly as it possibly can. And then the advice was um, the training that was provided um, would have um, helped with those instructions for um, operating, cleaning and maintaining all equipment. So having operating procedures in place um, and regular maintenance um, as well. So drawing on that case study, um, there was advice around having um, the correct documentation in place and safe systems of work. Um, and part of this is ensuring that that information is available to um, all staff and anyone that comes um, into and interacts with um, the business or the farm or estate. Um, and that that's embedded in daily operations. So um, you might have a you know large health and safety booklet, and this can be um, broken down and made digital um, so it's accessible on the phone. So I want to bring those um, into Safe Ag Systems and talk a bit about how those can be managed in our app. Um, so Safe Ag Systems, um, is an Australian um, software that was founded in um, 2016 
after a farm incident involving a combine harvester and an overhead power line. Um, fortunately, there was um, no fatalities, um, but they were investigated um, by the regulator and they sort of thought they had everything in place in terms of their safety and their documents. Um, but the inspectors asked for um, a multitude of different um, documents, including um, inductions, um, policies, training records of the person involved, the maintenance records of the machine involved, the safe operating procedures, um, so things like this. And upon finding they simply couldn't provide these things, um, Safe Ag Systems was born. Um, so we launched into the UK in 2021, um, and the system has been fully adapted for UK farms and estates. So I'll just drag over my screen here and um, give you a quick demo. Um, the whole system has a pretty large functionality, but I wanted to hone in on machinery today and what you can access through um, a QR code in our system. So if I hold my app over um, that QR code, which might be stuck inside the tractor cab, for example, um, this one is logging engine hours. So it pops up and will prompt me to update the engine hours in there for your record keeping. You can view the item, have a photo attached in there, how often you would like frequency done, where the manual is, um, setting a tax expiry date and a reminder of that. And um, if it's got a, a license or a description, um, all sits in there. We've then got maintenance and servicing records. So again, in that case study, that was something that was required that could have, um, was advice um, for future. So in SafeRag Systems, you can add the details in of maintenance records you can put photos in, add a description, um, and set yourself a task for the next date that maintenance is due um, as well. And then in the maintenance log, you can see everything that's been done um, historically and go in and view the um, details in there. You can access a risk assessment and um, have a read through um, controls that have been put in place. And there's also checklists on here. So these are some of our templates that come with the system, but there's no limit and you can add in your own and fully customize any of these. So if I just jump into the daily one that you might um, complete before using the tractor, go through the ticks. Um, if there are um, no issues found, I can complete the checklist and I'm fine. Um, but it's got um, logic in there so that if there are issues found and I fix them, I need to record what they are. And if they haven't been fixed, I've got to um, create a task and record the details and report that to, um, you know, my, my manager or the if you've got someone specific in the team that looks after maintenance, that all gets recorded. And then finally, is the machine safe to operate? Um, not safe it's going to get me to tag out the piece of equipment. So that will notify everyone in the team. The, um, the tractor is not fit for use. And if someone goes and scans that QR code in the afternoon, for example, it will pop up and say it's not fit for use um, until that is removed again. And then um, finally on here, we've got safe operating procedures. So again, these are, um, a few of our templates. Um, so the kind of thing you can have the attachments on here too. So um, safe systems of work, I've got the baler attachment in here um, as that's what this case study was about. And it will go through all of the um, sort of safe work sort of steps um, for to, say, to stay safe while using that piece of equipment. And each time that is accepted, it will log um, that it was completed and the, the time and the date and all of the user. So all of those records are in there. Um, finally, the other thing on the case study was reporting through RIDOR. So all of 
those sort of incidents and things can be um, reported in Safe Ag Systems and the details of um, if it is um, notifiable to HSE are available in there. So you can then pull out that information and do a separate um, report through Riddor um, if you need to. Um, so just going to sort of um, go to a very serious note now and um, talk about this number. Um, so which is a, um, yeah, a real number and these are real people. So 161 fatalities on British farms in the last five years, um, even in the last year in 22-23, there were 27 fatalities in agriculture and these include children and members of the public as well. So um, just worth if there's one thing you sort of take away is that um, it's not you until it is. And we all know somebody who's been injured or sort of one person um, removed of, you know, often fatalities. So that's six, 161 people missing um, from the dinner table at Christmas. Um, and there's nothing more important than making sure that everyone gets home safely at the end of the day even if it does take, you know, a little bit of time during the work day, just stopping and um, putting some extra steps in place just to make sure that, um, yeah, everyone stays safe. So picking the sort of mood back up now, I'm um, going to go into some questions. Um, I've got my details on there as well. I'd love to yeah hear from you with any um, future webinar topics um, be happy to do a sort of series of them and um, feedback as well and of course yeah you can always send through any praise if you want to <laughs> um, so our website's on there um, there's a free trial there's also a completely free risk assessment tool and you can do as many risk assessments um, to your heart's content and save all of them um, on there as well and create an account so that's all free of charge um, so I'm just going to jump over to my um, colleague Kirby and just ask her if you could um, grab some questions from the Q and A. Um, can you hear me, Kirby? Yes, I can. We've got one from Trina. I hope I'm saying your name right there. Um, will Safe Ag Systems still work with poor internet service? Thank you, um, Trina. So yes, um, it will do. So the system's got offline functionality built in. Um, the only section is the um, the sort of mapping. So um, it can't get over the, um, the, the sort of picking up a live location through Google Maps and your hazard maps. But in terms of all of your access in your emergency plans, all of completing a checklist, scanning a QR code, looking at the safe operating procedure, all of that is available um, offline. And we've got another one here from Richard. It's not really a question. Um, it's probably a little bit more of praise. He wants to say thanks, very interesting. Um, and he sees an opportunity for us. So we should probably take that offline with him, Hannah. Mm -hmm. uh, reach out to Richard Wade. I will do. Thanks, Richard. Have we got any else in there? I know I've got a couple just because they're always asked here in Australia. Um, does the system come with templates and can they be edited? Yes, um, it does indeed. There are um I think almost 400 templates now, which sit across um, across checklists, policies, procedures, and um, inductions um, that have all been fully adapted for UK legislation. Um, and then as soon, so you can grab any of our templates, have a read through. Um, if you'd sort of, if it's appropriate for you, just um, click customize and you can edit all of those and um, yeah, copy and paste. Um, also any of your own documents into the system as well. Excellent. And I know this is another question, um, probably it's it's for all wherever Safe Ag Systems is available, um, but I know it's one that we get, is what are the other advantages to having 
SafeAg systems and records all in one place? Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's a good one because it's not just um, safety in there, but there's lots of sort of efficiency and operational wins as well through using an app to manage things. Um, so you've got um, so warranty advantages of um, if you're logging small issues that have gone wrong with a piece of equipment or work that you've done, um, you can then report on those. So you can look at the first hundred hours, for example, um, and see you know what went wrong and take that um, back to the manufacturer. Um, then in terms of insurance, often your insurance, um, your insurer won't insure you unless you've got like a fire policy, for instance. So that can be managed um, in the system and you can prove as well with our sort of safety rating that you've got an active um, safety safety management system um, in place. And I'd probably say the other one is um, through having a task management and everything in one place, you can free your mind of um, lots of the clutter, um, the regular maintenance you need to do, and you know, re remembering to update tax expiries and um, renew things like that. So you can then focus on um, the big things um, as well. So yeah, there's a few different elements of, of gains in there. We've got two more questions that have just come in, Hannah, and I know we're, we're conscious of time and trying to be respectful of that for everybody. So we've got Julie Wells here. Thank you very much. I just watched with my year 12 Agri students, a great link to our unit one BTEC level three syllabus, which is all about health and safety. So that's good to hear. Thanks for letting us know that, Julie. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, thank you all for joining us. And the other one is Trina. Um, can you add other non-mechanical risks, example, chemical store? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't want to sort of do a super deep dive today, um, but because I just did um, machinery, but absolutely, it's all in there. Um, you can have um, a chemical store in there as a structure. And so you can record all the same information and manage it through QR codes as well, log maintenance, have um, checklists for the chemical store. Um, there's also a whole chemical register in the system too. So you can record what you've got on farm, um, keep a stock take, um, all of that as well, also all in the system. Excellent. I think that's wrapped up the questions that have come through our Q&A area, Hannah. Fab, thank you. Um, well, yeah, thank you to everybody for um, joining and taking the time out of your day to come along. Um, we have recorded this um, webinar, so um, it will we'll send it out by the end of the week. And we've got a machinery sort of safety guide um, as well, which we'll share with you. So, um, yeah, feel free to, um, to share that um, with anyone that may be interested as well. Um, but, yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, and as always, keep safe, keep farming. Thank you.